the geometry of drapery. You may look at drapery and see chaos, but really it is governed by a very subtle geometry. And the way I like to think about it is through a series of cylinders. So let me just draw out a cylinder here. A very simplified idea of a cylinder. But in order to draw a cylinder, very often what we do is we'll put surface contour lines on it. So here's your cylinder. And those surface contour lines are describing the radius of that cylinder. The, if I were to draw contour lines or lines on the surface going with the form, notice that those lines are straight lines and that these lines are curved describing the radius. But this, but drapery is more complicated than that. Imagine that I were to take three cylinders and put them together. Now what I can do is actually take part of this cylinder and part of that cylinder and part of this cylinder and create this wave form. And I can continue these all the way around. So now what do I have? I definitely am starting to see drapery. I'm starting to see, and you start to see this as this pleated pattern or this curtain form, right? The other thing about a cylinder is that you can turn a cylinder into a cone. And a cone is really just a cylinder with a, a, a small end and a large end. So I can take that cylinder, maybe make another one, put, it, put three cylinders together, and you can see where we're going with this. And All of a sudden, then we have a pleated pattern where we have a, a couple cones that are pointed towards maybe a radiating point up here. The next thing you have to understand about the geometry of, of drapery, what would happen if I took one of those cylinders and bent it? The normal curve. Well, could the inside of that cylinder go like this? Unlikely. The outside of that cylinder, because the drapery is doesn't stretch, nor does it really compress, as we'll see, what happens is the outside of that cylinder gets very taut, and the inside of the cylinder will actually create pleats, or these what are called the eye of the fold. And the way the shape works is that they have larger, and then as it gets to that eye, it gets the radius changes to a, a tighter radius or a shorter radius. And then it expands again, and then starts to tighten up again. And that's your standard 
fold pattern with eyes of the fold. I'll show you that in a real piece of fabric. I'm going to set up my model, which will be the draped fabric, and I'm going to show you how to begin to uh, replicate that in clay. I'm going to use just the whittled down chopstick. Uh, this is because some of you do not have the tools, and I'll use a butter knife. And um, so to begin, what I had mentioned before is what I want to do is create a small uh, folded or draped area. And so the first thing I'll do will be, I'll try to do it in this area so that we can see it. I'll just kind of lift it up, create that single cylinder. And then maybe what I'll do is I'll give it a little bit of a twist. Not too much. You do want to keep this simple. I'm going to press it down here, stretch it out a little bit. So I have really just have a couple things. You might want to play with it just a little bit. I think that might be good. You can see here I have a lot of, this is at first glance is not that complex, but really as you, just like with the leaf, the more you really look at it, the more complex it gets. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that image and I'm going to start modeling it over here. Begin with some warmed oil clay. And I'm going to start by thinking of this pattern through here. And it's going to come in just like this possibly with the knot or the wrinkly part in through here. So the main way of doing this is just using your clay to sketch in the high points. Whenever I lay down clay, I always lay it down intentionally. This wad of clay, when I put it here, means that. We went over this in class. So this equals that. Even though the clay that I'm putting down here will be covered by another layer of clay, when I put this down, I'm adding, adding the material in a way that will reflect the form. I'm not just going to wad a whole bunch of clay here and alter it later. Every time I put down a piece of clay, and in this case I'm creating little worms or something and then using them to begin my process and there and again I see these ridge lines all through here and then they're becoming the ridge lines through here and that ridge line comes down along through here up and around so Ridge line, ridge line, ridge line, here. So I'm going to do this for a while. It's going to take me. So at this point, you might see that I can count the eyes of the fold. 
Here's an eye. Here's an eye. Here's an eye. Another one. There's actually multiples down in here. And possibly another one up there. And I'm going to keep doing this until adding clay. I'm going to keep adding clay and building this form in, until I run out of clay. I'm going to keep going, uh, starting in the center and moving my way out, adding mass. Notice I am adding clay in the direction of the form. Later on, what I'll do is I'll model across the form to describe its shape. I can do that with my finger as well. This is a tool, or one of the tools that I uh, asked you to buy. Um, if you don't have the tool, no worries. Uh, you do not need to use it. But I wanted to use this because of the teeth in it. The, to show you how you should go about modeling this. So you'll notice that as I was building these ridge lines, I added clay in the direction. That's about massing. I add clay in the direction, but then I use my tool and model across the form. So, for example here, as I am modeling this, I can shape those cylinders. I can shape those folds, and I can bring them all together. So I can see here, there's a pretty strong straight line cylinder right along through here. And what I can do is add clay in that direction this way, going out into that direction. But then I can take this tool and model across it to describe its its shape. So in this case, it's a pretty strong cylinder that comes up and around and down like this. And then that leads into what it would be a negative cylinder over here. So even the negative cylinders, I would go in the direction of the form along this way and then shape in that direction. So it's positive cylinder wrapping around to a negative cylinder. Yeep, yeep. And that, again, brings us up to here. Turns into an eye. 